So welcome back viewers. Today's video will be about how to install the Z Plus upgrade for the Shea Poco. At the time I made this video, there were no online instructions, so I'm hoping to do that today. The reason you might want to install this Z upgrade is to improve the accuracy of the Z axis. The old axis was belt driven, and so there's a lot of belt stretch there. And another issue I had was if the software ever crashed and I recycled power to my Shea Poco, my Z spindle would just drop because it's so heavy. Uh, the counterbalance springs weren't strong enough, so I actually have my bungee cord left over that I would use to help counterbalance the weight of the Z axis. But now, as you can see, it, it takes quite a bit of effort to move this by hand, so I think I'm safe there. The biggest advantage of the ball screw is that one revolution moves the stage 2.5 millimeters where with the belt driven pulley, the stage would move 40 millimeters. So the ball screw is able to apply 15 X the amount of force. On the right side, I have my old Z axis and I wanted to show you the deflection. And on the left side, I have the new Z axis installed. And as you can see, I'm putting a lot more force in there and that Z axis does not want to budge and that's what's gonna improve your accuracy of your cut depth. The kit arrives in three small cardboard boxes. The first one has the three prox switches, which is a nice upgrade. The next box has some zip ties. It has a daughter board for connecting the proxes to your old Shape Poco circuit board. And the third box has the actual Z axis itself and this is the mounting bracket for the spindle mount. And this thing weighs probably two or three pounds. It's solid steel on the back. And it also comes with the upgraded heavy duty eccentric nuts. Here I'm removing the bottom V-wheels so that I can hang this on the machine. This should just be able to hang on there. Look at that. Before you mount the V-wheels, on the eccentric nuts, you want to set the nuts so that the wheels are at their lowest, loosest position. And that little dimple on the nut shows that it's at top dead center. So here I'm installing the V-wheels on the bottom. I'm going to speed through this part and just show you the wheels installed. And you want to tension the nuts so that you have just a little bit of drag on the V-wheels. It's better to turn the cams counterclockwise so that you don't over tighten the bolt that holds the V-wheel on. And I'm going to do the same for the other side and go back and make sure that the V-wheels are snugged up. This glides nice and smooth. So the next step is to swap over the Y-axis motor from the old Z-axis. And it looks like the motor should just swap over. Here I'm just taking off the X-axis belt and I marked it just out of curiosity to see if it changes after I install the new axis. I always like to put the bolts back in where they came out so they don't get lost. And I'm just decluttering the wiring and getting the motor unbolted. I'm using a right angle pick to drag the belt through the set of pulleys so that I can bolt the new motor in place. And now I'm reattaching the x-axis belt and it looks like I needed a little bit more tension. I don't have a scientific method for checking tension but just kind of go by feel. So these are the two boxes we have left. This is a little daughter board that clips on to the controller circuit board. This adapter lets us plug in the three pin proxes instead of the two pin limit switches that we had previously. And here I'm just unplugging all the two pin limit switches and plugging in the daughter board. So with all the wires free, uh, it's okay to remove the spindle now. I just removed the V-wheels off the old spindle and removing it and putting all the hardware back on just so those parts don't get lost. Here I'm removing the spindle mount bolts and we're going to move that over to the new Z-axis. The kit comes with this plate which mounts onto the Z-stage like this. 
and it'll also mount to the spindle mount with two bolts. This intermediate plate makes it really easy to remove the spindle mount since you no longer have to reach from behind to get to the mounting bolts. And it also makes it easy to tram the level of the spindle since you can slip shim stock in there. This is the bracket used to attach the Y proc switch. And I'm just removing the old switch, mounting the bracket. These are the screws that came in the bag to mount the switch. Make sure you route your wires so that they're not going to get caught in any of the pulleys and label your connector. Next we're going to install the X limit switch mount. If you look closely at the bracket you'll see a little shoulder cut in where the bolt head is supposed to fit so this only is meant to go on in one direction. I mounted my prox on the back side of the plate so it has a large flat surface as a target. If you mounted it on the front of the plate, it would be kind of looking at the corner radius and that wouldn't be as robust. You want to make sure to leave about one to two millimeters of gap between the prox and the target just so that the two don't collide and your prox doesn't get damaged. And we're going to label our connector again. I'm feeding the Z-prox cable through this hole and attaching the Z-prox and this whole process would have been easier if I had pushed the Z stage all the way down so it's out of the way. So our Z-Prox is installed, and if you look down inside, you can see the flag that'll trip the sensor. And we're just going to mark our plug with a Z. The sense distance is about 3 to 4 millimeters. Going to plug in our Prox switches and button everything up. Once I finally got everything buttoned up and I tried to home, the machine wouldn't home, and I realized that the motor connector was pinned wrong, so I removed the pins. I reset the catch on the pin and repinned the connector, and now all four motors match. Before turning the machine on, you want to make sure all your cables are free and they're not going to bind or rip out. In Carbide Motion, we have to select the Z Plus option and download the configuration. This recalibrates the controller so it knows how many pulses per millimeter the new stage is. And it also reverses the direction of the Z motor, because before this, it was homing in the downward position. So we're finally able to home the machine. And it's nice seeing these proc switches light up with their LEDs. This was the extent that I was able to jog the axes in X, Y, and Z, which I feel is maybe a little more than it was with the belt drive. First thing you should do when you unbox this is look for debris in the motor, both the axes that I had had debris in both ends of the motor and you will want to get a magnet and pull that debris out uh, just so it doesn't work its way inside the motor. It looks like it's remnants from machining the Acme screw. The anti-backlash nuts look like custom machined pieces of Delrin and there's a spring in there that maintains tension on the two. Well to sum it up I'm super happy with the rigidity of the system. Uh, this thing is really stout. Uh, no more belt deflection. Uh, the Z-axis should be able to produce 15x the force and also have 15x the accuracy. And I don't have to worry about if I lose power having my spindle drop in and destroying my material. When I looked at this online, I just assumed I was buying the Z plus stage. I didn't realize the kit also came with all new proc switches to replace the limit switches. And it also came with heavy duty eccentric nuts, so those are both kind of bonuses. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.